And here at Hockenheim, Michael Schumacher's resurgent championship challenge gets stronger. Fernando Alonso's championship lead shrinks still further. We'll discuss both in just a moment. But it's back to form for Honda. And I'm delighted to say we're joined by Gilles de Ferran, Mark Blundell and myself. After a good qualifying performance was followed up by a good race performance. Yeah. Satisfaction again. No question. I mean, uh, very happy about today. I think uh, Jensen drove a fantastic race. I mean, uh, we're looking good there for a podium. And uh, unfortunately, at the end, he started to struggle a little bit with the balance and uh, we couldn't quite uh, hold back Kimi. But nevertheless, I think uh, certainly a, a very good day for us and, and Jensen. Have you yet to get things absolutely right off the start line, though? Uh, have a look once again at Jensen off the start. And he, he got jumped by the two Renaults. Uh, it certainly wasn't the best of starts, neither for uh, him or, or Jensen. But uh, clearly, right after that, he, he came on a big charge and uh, went all the way back to third. So I think... Uh, you know, that's uh, certainly uh, something we have to look at and, and try to improve. But uh, after that, you'll see he drove fantastically well. But something definitely to build on for the rest of the season. How disappointing not to get a podium finish out of this? Well, it's certainly disappointing, you know, but we're looking at the positive side. You know, uh, we, we had a tough uh, run the last few races, so to, to get a fourth uh, with uh, Jensen was good. You know, uh, Rubens was running well as well. It was unfortunate we had the failure with him. Otherwise, we could have had uh, two cars in the, in the points. Rubens Barrichello, by contrast, uh, are disappointing. They're going well, uh, and the problems here were exactly what? Well, fairly fundamental, obviously. Well, exactly. I mean, uh, but we, we don't know exactly what it, what it was, so uh, we have to get the car back and, uh, and have a look at uh, what happened. But I think uh, on the positive side, he was, uh, he was on a charge as well. He, he uh, made by Weber, and uh, he was uh, catching up Alonso, and everything uh, looked good. The thing that we need to understand, I think also the audience, Gio, is how come you've been quite poor in performance and then we come here and all of a sudden it's a big turnaround. You're back at the front in qualifying, obviously you've had a great race, your strategy looked good. Yeah. Why the difference? Well, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, uh, certainly the engine, uh, is. Uh, we have a new specification and uh, that was working uh, quite well uh, this weekend. You know, and there's lots of little improvements in the car with the improvements on the, on the electronic systems, uh, improvement on the suspension, uh, improvements on the aerodynamics of the car. So it's lots of little things and hopefully we'll continue that, that progression uh, uh, from here to the end of the year. Thanks, Gilles. And we'll be hearing from Jensen either later or in our highlights program later this evening. This is how the Drivers' Championship has changed and Alonso's lead has shrunk now to just 11 points. Third win in succession for Michael Schumacher. Felipe Massa moves ahead of Fisichella and Raikkonen into third place in that championship battle. But what is happening to Fernando Alonso? Let's hear from him with Louise. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Fernando, clearly a very tough weekend. Why did you not have the pace here? I don't know. I think in the race we were not too bad, uh, to be honest, and really uh, possibility to be in the podium. But in the first set of tyres, I dropped off too much. I was not anymore in the, in the gap. And um, I think coming from that, the, the podium we miss. You've had to change the damper system this weekend. How much of an impact has that had? I don't think that much, to be honest. It's, it's true that uh, with this result, it's easy to, to say that uh, this will affect the car, but uh, I'm totally sure in, in Hungary we will be back with the right setup, right tyre, and uh, forget this, this damper. You lost a lot of points to Michael this weekend. He's coming up fast on you as far as the championship's concerned. How worried are you? Well, I'm not worried and as far as I'm in front of him. But it's true that uh, if we keep going like this, in three or four races we will be equal in points and this is not good for me so you know I will try the maximum in the next next you seem quite chilled I thought you might be a bit more upset after that result as, as far as I do the maximum I'm I'm always happy uh, I think the team did the maximum the Michelin did the maximum for us and uh, we lost this battle but uh, you know I think we're still ahead of the championship and uh, we can do it I'm sure He's got a smile on his face, Mark, but he must be a very worried man. I think he is worried, Stephen. I think there's also a little bit more there with that mass damper situation coming away from Renault. That's probably had some effect on the handling, and that's brought up some issues with the Michelin tyre, because we know that the Michelin tyre has been working very effectively on the McLaren with Kimi Raikkonen. Well, they might possibly have that damper system back for Hungary, but now they've got Kimi Raikkonen getting in the way as well, and after qualifying so well yesterday, well, we thought he would drop back down the field, but what a storming last section to the race he put together. Coming out of the pits, and this was how he saw off Mark Webber. Well, this is uh, unbelievable for me because McLaren had lost him some six seconds or so with a, a dodgy rear tyre change. They made up for it in this pit stop and this is 
pure race driver anger more or less coming out because there's no way he's going to let Weber go by. This for me also was one of the great moves of the race. Kimi slipping up the inside of Jensen Button. It's, it's just textbook move and it's pure racer. Kimi is one of the best guys on the race circuit. When it comes to overtaking, you see the guys set down and, he, and he's done with it. It's just a clean move all the way. How big a factor is he going to be in the way this championship is resolved? Uh, I, think that, I think this championship is now wide open. I just see that Renault are faltering. Schumacher, Ferrari and Massa, who's done a support role, which is second to none for me. There's a big championship fight now. But a Ferrari 1-2, let's take you straight into the press conference that's just getting underway. Michael, difficult to know where to start. Your 70th win for Ferrari, a big dent in Fernando's championship lead, 100th win for Bridgestone, a phenomenal day for you. Yeah, you, you're putting numbers on, uh, they're very important. But at the moment, probably the most important is 11. And it's 11 points left uh, in terms of championship lead for Fernando. We had a superb weekend. I mean, our car just functioned really great. We had uh, a good workout before coming here, the, the last and final test before the summer break. We worked very hard together with uh, Bridgestone in order to sort out our position and, and get organized and understand everything until the last detail. We improved the car, uh, Shell delivering great product. So it's, it's a package which uh, is the reason why we can perform as we do perform. Although I have to say it was a bit of a surprise being that much uh, in front, but uh, we'll take it. We'll really take it. It's the right moment in time uh, where we need to have uh, such a performance in order to climb down uh, the gap in, in the championship and uh, keep pressure on. And yeah, superb weekend for all of us. Well, it looked that way from the outside. Were there any moments during the race that you would describe as in any way critical or risky or anything bad happened to you at all today? Not really, no. No, there was nothing uh, bad. Well, because we had such a margin, we could really drive safe. Uh, it would have been maybe difficult and probably have seen cars going off uh, the track because offline it was uh, very dirty because uh, we're running pretty soft uh, compounds here and there's a lot of rubber next to the line with all the dust and so on and I think the last car, oh, sorry, a car in the last corner went off because of that and other, ca other cars uh, probably had trouble and driving on the limit uh, it was uh, probably very difficult in a way and we didn't have to do that so we didn't really have moments. Congratulations to you again. Felipe, turning to you, a fantastic team performance from you as well too, just out there behind Michael the whole way. Yeah, I mean, that was our target today, especially uh, looking at our performance uh, yesterday morning. We saw that in the race uh, we had a very strong pace and uh, that was our target, you know, to put both Ferraris in the front. And uh, I think it was a, a great uh, job from the team, from everybody, from our suppliers and everything. And um, I think me and Michael just... Uh, uh, try to, to pull away the gap straight away and then we was just uh, uh, looking to finish for, uh, first and second. The perfect day for Ferrari and we can hear from Jensen Button. Uh, Louise has caught up with him. Well done, Jens. Best result since Malaysia. That's going in the right direction, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, it was great. I mean, the last stint was really tough because I had massive amounts of grading on the front left and, uh, and a lot of rear locking and, I, you know, I couldn't fight off Racken and I just... You know, I, I was surprised that he was alongside me when he was. Um, you know, they've got a lot of power, it seems. But, um, yeah, I couldn't really fight him off. But, you know, the first two stints was just so enjoyable to get past, post, past both the Renaults at the start and, um, and also Kimi during the race. I had a really, really good race. Um, I just had so much traffic. The, uh, the uh, Montiero just was in my way all the time. Unbelievable. But, um, but there you go. So definitely a step forward that's going to continue? Yeah, I think that's this is positive. You know, here today the Bridgestones was the Bridgestones were a stronger tyre. We definitely saw that with the Williams and also the Ferraris. You know, the Ferraris would have lapped everyone if they didn't slow down halfway through the race, um, and that's disappointing that they're so far in front. But uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll be back there in Hungary. But uh, you know, it's going to be tough. Um, but I'm really happy. It's been a great weekend for us, and uh, it's nice to top it off with some good, some good points. Uh, I just wish we could have been on the podium. But there you go. There's uh, there's many more races this year. Well done. Yes, Mark, it is very positive for Honda because there was an awful feeling they qualified well, but it might all fall apart in the race. Yeah, definitely. We thought that could actually be the case because that's what we've seen all season long. But they turned it around, and I'm very, very happy to see Jensen Button up there. Yes, I'd have loved to have seen him on the podium, but now he's got some platform 
to work with for the rest of the season. Rubens also a little bit unlucky with engine failure, but now we can see Honda grasping again and some progress being made. Other outstanding drives today. Mark Webber, no reward for what he did. Uh, what a shame for Mark Webber. The guy really did drive his, uh, his backside off. And I mean, he, <laughs> there's no two ways about it. The, the Cosworth... It's a great little engine, but it's just not reliable enough. And also, Williams has just not got the resource to go to the next step. But Mark Webber certainly deserved the podium, certainly deserved, uh, for me, probably driver of the day. I think he extracted the maximum out of that package. And Williams need to come back to form. Now, what about the next round, next weekend uh, in Hungary? Would you expect the same from Michael Schumacher, even if uh, Renaults have this damper system back? Uh, you know what, for me at this, this point, I think it's damage limitation for Renault today. And I think Ferrari with cruise control. I think they had plenty in hand. They just turned down the wick. They've got a lot more to go and I think Budapest will show that if they need it. So would you install Michael Schumacher as the championship favourite right now? Uh, I'd be looking at my odds in the, uh, in the betting shop and having a good go I think because I think he could do it, I truthfully do I think Renault quite not got what they need and um, we're seeing him crack and if he did, you'd back him to carry on next year, I'm sure. Uh, undoubtedly, and whoever you put alongside him, I don't think he's going to worry too much, whether it's Kimi Raikkonen or whoever else is down this pit lane, he will still be number one. OK, Mark, thanks very much for the day. Thanks very much for this weekend. Great day for Michael Schumacher and Ferrari, and unless Renault finds some answers, they could be neck and neck at the end of Budapest next weekend. Join us for that Hungarian Grand Prix. Stay tuned for the touring cars. Bye.